Hey guys, this is Eileen from Jane Nicole Designs. I am so glad that you are here with me today. We are going to do a t-shirt, you can see it. And um, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about um, how to do a Cricut and um, design space. And then we're going to be using my heat press. So I'm gonna wait for a few minutes uh, to get some people back on here and then um, we will start. So if you have any questions, for one for me, I would have for you is how many people out there have crickets? And how many people love their cricket? And how many people are afraid of their cricket? Um, the last time I was talking about it with a group of girlfriends, um, I think five out of the eight um, either hadn't picked it up, uh, it's still in the box, or um, yeah, they're just too terrified. And um, you know, it's a little bit of techie, but uh, it, it's super easy once you get a handle of it. Um, same with um, the heat press. Um, and we'll, we'll go along when um, I use that. I'll tell you a little bit about that. So um, I just wanna give out a shout out to my mentor and she doesn't know it yet, but I'm gonna put her on um, the spot here. Uh, her name is Audrey McCutton and Audrey is a part of um, Etsy. She does SVG files and it is Aubrey Jean SVG. So go there and check her out. She has lots of Disney and super fun stuff um, to do heat press and um, cutting, things like that. So um, she does have some sublimination and things like that that you can get to. But the reason why I want to give her a shout out is when I decided to do Jane Nicole designs. I started with the idea of making some t-shirts and getting some um, sales and things like that. And I wanted to, you know, do it right the first time. And so uh, Aubrey helped me with the late night, my cricket's not working, um, the early morning, um, my heat press is not in here yet and um, I had some orders to make and my heat press wasn't there yet uh, and she allowed me to go over to her house and and use all of her stuff and be able to um, get my very first order out so um, she is a great great mentor a beautiful wonderful soul and um, if you guys have a chance to go and look at her um, her Etsy site I I would highly recommend it so um, the second one I want to give a big shout out to was Katrina and she is Northwest. It's NW Creative Creation Concepts. Yes, um, Creative Concepts. And Katrina made me um, some specialized dog wear and um, super, super helpful. I couldn't find anything on the internet. And she was like, here, let me help you. And so um, go to Etsy and check out Northwest Creative Concepts with Katrina. She um, she has some amazing designs. So um, just those right off the bat. But um, let's get started. What we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be picking out a design and um, I'm gonna be putting it on the Cricut in design space. I'm gonna be cutting it with the vinyl um, from uh, we have heat pressed with vinyl and then um, I'm going to be putting it over on the press and I'm going to show you how I press a t-shirt. So um, let's get started. First we're going to be going to the design space and I'm going to turn around so you're just going to kind of see the back of me. Um, let me know if, if I'm in your way. Hi Renee, it's good to see ya. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll figure this out. I'm not gonna be looking at you, so I'll switch back and forth a, a few times just to make sure that everything's going good. But um, come along with me. We are going to make um, a t-shirt. Okay, let's make sure that you can see. All right, so I have Cricut Design Space already put on my computer. It is a easy uh, install. You, when you get your, um, your Cricut, it will tell you the exact way how to put it on there. And so um, I won't do that. And I know YouTube has tons of videos that you can uh, figure out how to do that. But 
Um, just want to let you know that that's probably something for a different video. Um, but like I said, go and check out YouTube. But this is my favorite sound in the whole wide world. Ready? That's my cricket going on. If I had any one piece of equipment and every thing I had to throw away in my craft room, um, I would keep my crickets. Uh, I've owned four of them and um, I've actually given three of them away uh, to other people that just, you know, wanted to try it out. And I said, here, keep it. And I highly recommend uh, the cricket. All right, so let me open it up and let's get started. Okay, up in my corner is the Cricut logo. And this is the first page you're gonna get to and I'm gonna move it a little bit closer to see if we can, there we go. Um, there are things that are on here that you can have that's already done for you or you can make a project. And so I'm going to, I've already picked my project um, just for time's sake. And so I'm going to just click on, this is my t-shirt that I'm going to make. Um, it says life is better on the farm. And so there's two options here. You can either make it if you've already um, put it in here or you can customize it. And I'm going to customize it because I want to show you, and I'm sorry that it's backwards, but um, I'm going to show you how I decide and what to do for a t-shirt. Um, this one here, I uploaded from designbundles.com. Love that place, get a lot of my designs from them. Um, because I'm commercial, I make sure that the license is commercial and not personal, but this is what the design is. So I make sure my t-shirt that I'm going to be making today is a medium. Um, what, what I'm wearing here is a large, so it's a little bit bigger. And I do that um, in the winter time because I like to um, wear shirts underneath my shirts. And um, the t-shirt that we're going to be using today is Bella Canvas. And it is a, a unisex size, so guys and girls can wear them. And I totally love that. So... Um, I've already picked the piece of vinyl that I'm gonna use. And it's kind of a burgundy color. I don't know if you can see that, if it's burgundy or not. But um, this is a scrap that I had. I had used a little bit off the side for a project. And this is what I got to work with. So depending on what size that you want your uh, image to be, you can decide uh, via the, the sizing here. So. On the top here is all a bunch of options. And of course, because you can't see it, um, and I know that there is a lot of other YouTube videos that will tell you every function. I'm just gonna tell you what I, I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna go right over here to the size. And this paper is, or this um, piece of vinyl is actually seven by 10. So I want to make it a little bit smaller than seven so I'm going to go six point, oh, let's say eight five, and then I'm going to hit enter. And what it does is it automatically, because I selected the whole image, it's going to bring it to a size that is um, attainable at that page size. So right now it is 6.75 and this is 9.54. So I know that it's going to fit on this piece of vinyl. All right, so once I have my image, and this is only a one color, I'm not gonna do multiple, just for the first basic. I just wanna let you guys know and show you how to do this. And then um, later on, I will give you tutorials down the road that have uh, more colors. But for today, we're just gonna go simple so that um, anybody and everybody can use it. All right, so once I do that, I have hanging in front of me. This is my mat, and I always keep that clear on it. This is brand new, and so what I've done is, is so that it's not so, so sticky, I took a towel and I tapped a towel all over it so that um, 
it it has a little bit of the fuzz from the the towel and so it's not as um sticky and sometimes when you put a brand new mat and new vinyl it's super hard to get off so what i recommend is go ahead and put a towel or washcloth something that has cotton and a few fibers on it and then um, put that on there and then you can make sure that it's not too too sticky so when we do vinyl um, this is a shiny side. This is the matte side. We're going to put the matte side down and put it up in the corner. Lay it down so that it is completely in the square that you're going to be using. Now, if you look here, it's going to go in that square right up at the top. So that's where I want it to go. All right, so now that I have my, my vinyl on, I'm ready to load it into my Cricut. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on the machine. I like to ha put my hand right there and I just push the load button. And it's ready. So I'm gonna go back to my computer and I'm gonna sit and say, I'm gonna make it. And that's the green button up in the corner. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like, and I'm sorry that you can't see it as well. Let's see if I can get some more light on it. But it is right here in the corner, and because I'm on a t-shirt, and I sometimes I forget, um, I have to click the mirror button, and the mirror button actually flips it so that when I put it on my t-shirt, then um, it's gonna be right side up because remember we have it upside down over here. So then when we flip it and put it on the, the heat press, it's gonna be the right way. So now I'm gonna hit continue. See how easy this is, Cricut lovers? I hope that you can um, see this tutorial and say, you know what, I can do this. <laughs> All right, so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, browse materials and then I'm gonna have it go on vinyl. And this is iron-on. You can actually, on your Cricut, you pick custom. I always pick custom. Because it, then it says, what would you like to use? Let's move that over, this little button here. And what it does is sometimes I cut glitter vinyl, sometimes like I cut sports vinyl and whatnot. It makes sure that what you are cutting, when you cut paper and whatnot, that you'll be able to um, get the right material. So sometimes I've cut super thin paper and then I put glitter on there and um, I tried to cut through the glitter and of course it didn't work. And so I'm just like, you know what? I wanna put it on custom so that every time I put a medium on there to cut, then um, I know what it is. So I'm gonna hit just the everyday iron on, and then I'm gonna hit done. And so that's number one, which is so nice. Number two, it says materials loaded. Yep, put that in there. And then it says, press the flashing cricket. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. And then um, what it does is it prepares the image. You can hit pause, there's a pause button right there. If for some reason while your image is not doing what you want to, you can unload it, you can hit the, the arrow. And so it's really easy to be able to um, make sure that that image is good. I actually once in a while just look around and make sure that um, when it's cutting, that it's cutting in the right depth. Um, you know, I would want to only ruin a couple inches of the piece of paper. If not, then um, then we'll do that. So the next, next thing I was gonna let you know while it's cutting, because it's gonna take a few minutes to cut, um, I always have my uh, cutter available. It's a 12 inch. This is one I've had for, oh goodness, probably 10, 12 years. And the blades are replaceable. You can pick them out and you can replace them with sharper blades. And then a big must is a ruler. And this one's see-through and I love it because you can be able to look at your project, see through it. Um, this one is actually a close to my heart one. Um, they're the rubber stamping and scrapbooking company. And um, 
I love it. I've had this for a very long time as well. If you can find a, um, a ruler that is see-through, I would highly recommend it. Another thing, this is my all-time fun. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces that, that I use. And this is the Cricut. It's the little pick that you um, pick out the vinyl with. And um, I love this. I do have, this is another good thing too. I use, these are eyebrow sharp um, tweezers. And they're really good for picking out each of those little tiny pieces. And we may use those today just while we're, we're doing some of the, um, the vinyl weeding. And for a long time, I had no idea what the word weeding was. And I thought, hmm, maybe that's a garden term, um, but it is not. It is basically taking what you're not gonna be using on your image uh, when you press out. And so for a long time, I was like, oh my goodness, I, I'm not gardening, I am actually using vinyl. So that's a good term that when somebody talks to you and you say, what is weeding? You know what, I'm gonna let you know first because I felt kind of, you know, anyway. Okay, another one, this one here is, this is Making Memories. And this one is a, like almost like a tweezer as well. Um, I use this a lot for some of the bigger pieces that I um, use. Uh, taking out vinyl and sometimes glitter is really good with this as well This here is another one if you have uh, this is a, a Cricut uh, Little paddle and I've used this quite a bit as well If you have a big piece of vinyl that you want to make sure that gets all off in one spot um, This is a really good one to use as well. So Make sure that um, those are kind of, I would say these two pieces, if you don't have these, um, you know, Joann's, Michael's, you can go ahead and um, order it on Amazon or, or you know, cricket.com would be a good spot to, to get this one. And um, I would say highly recommend. This one here, you see this one, this one I use for eyelets. And um, when I was doing a lot of card, uh, different cards and things like that, I would poke this through the hole and then punch in my eyelet. Well, um, I don't do as much card making anymore. And so I was like, well, let me see if I can repurpose this. And um, I use this a lot for glue and putting on little things, but I, I use it a lot for uh, Cricut um, weeding. So um, it, this is a really good tool. And you know what, to be honest, I am not sure where I got this but I would say probably um, like a Michaels or Hobby Lobby um, hardware sales might have something like this that's an eyelet, um, either some type of a, um, a uh, oh, what do you call it, um, hardware store or something like that. Okay, so our image is done. I'm gonna push the button to go out and then I'm gonna flip it over. And this is how I peel my vinyl. I want to make sure that I don't uh, wrinkle my vinyl in a way that I can't use it again. And so I just peel it from the back and then I'm done. Okay, so we're going to do the other project as well because it's going to take a few minutes to be able to weed that as well. So I'm going to hit finish and I'm going to go backwards. There we go. I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't want to place. I'm gonna run over to my projects. And this one here, this project is gonna be fun. Um, I'm kind of a farm girl. I grew up on a, on a 10 acre farm in Washington. And so my love of cows, um, I did actually have cows in my kitchen for decor for a long, long time. And so, um, we, uh, I, I'm super happy with uh, th this, this design. I got this one from Design Bundles. It was a farmhouse. And let me make it bigger so you can see it. Oh, sorry you guys. I have, my daughter came home and my 130 pound German Shepherd just is trying to greet them. So, sorry for the big noise. <laughs> okay, so this is my um, design. I'm gonna put an, this one in, um, black vinyl 
And so I'm going to load this on my mat. Let me do it over here. When I have rounds like this, I go ahead, I'm going to do it this way. Get it under my there we go. Hi, Abby. Hi. My daughter just came home. Long day at work, it looks like, or off. It looks like. Okay. So when you put that on there, make sure that there's not a bunch of bubbles, that it's right in the way there. Smooth things out. And then go ahead and load your mat, same like before. Push it in there, I put my hand here. Click the load button. If it doesn't do anything and you wanna make sure, I always make sure that I click it again. Okay, and now it's ready. So um, I'm gonna make sure, let's see, my t-shirt is a large and I have um, about nine inches um, high and about 11 inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just type that in. So the way how you can take an image and uh, not keep it in the same um, diameter as the person that made it is down in the corner here there is a little it almost looks like a little locket or a key. And if you push on that, there we go, and go here, let's see. You can actually put in the diameter of what you need and the height of what you need, and it will go proportion to that. Remember the first one we did is we just did the seven inches and then it calculated the bottom. Well, this one here, you can actually take it and make it any size you would like. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to put it at, there it goes, at 11 inches because that's how um, wide I want it. And then um, actually the six and, a, and six eighths is fine if you wanted to keep it that way but I want to make it a little bit taller. So I'm going to delete what's already in here. Back, back, back. And I want it eight inches high. So I'm going to put eight zero zero. All right, see how it got a little bit bigger? Cause I want it, I want it right on the front of me. So, all right, now I'm going to click that it's ready and I'm going to make it. See how large, it's quite large. I'm gonna hit the mirror because we want it to go backwards because we're not doing the front, we're actually cutting on the back. And then I'm gonna hit continue. So I can tell if the mirror is on, it says mirror on, I'm good. I already have just cut with the, the vinyl um, on iron on so I can keep it that way. And then I can just um, see here. Let's do that. Let's do, let's just browse. I wanna make sure that I did that right. I wouldn't want it to cut something that we don't want. Okay, so I hit everyday iron on and done. And then there's our flashing light, which means it's ready for it to cut. And then we're gonna cut. Okay, move this back. So now I have a vinyl here that um, I'm gonna show you how to, um, to weed this. And when I do, I have a, a light board or you can use just a, a, a lamp light. But the first thing I wanna do is when I'm doing a, um, a vinyl thing like this, I like to take my weeding tool and I like to pick out each one of the uh, vinyl in the inside first and then the outside. So the vinyl, this vinyl that I'm using right now is a pretty thick vinyl. I believe it is from Amazon. And um, it's a little heftier than 
your Cricut vinyl or um, the vinyl that is black that we're cutting out right now, which is from swingdesign.com. I get most of my commercial vinyl from Swing Design because it is a very, very good vinyl. Um, I believe it is um, Caesar. And we, um, I've had a lot of good success with that. Um, if you're just doing, you know, just everyday projects, the, um, the Cricut vinyl is um, suffice. But um, like I said, when I have t-shirt orders and I want them to run through the washer um, multiple times, I make sure that I have more of a commercial grade um, vinyl. Okay, so I'm almost done with this. And like I said, I use multiple, multiple tools. Let's see if I can. There we go. I know you can't see this very well. Let me move it up here. There we go. There, now you can see some of it. So, um, those of you that are watching, go ahead and give me a comment. What are you up to today? It's happy Friday, but um, what's gonna go on for the rest of your day? It is pretty rainy here in North Idaho, so I'm not sure uh, what, what we are gonna end up doing today after this, other than I have a dear friend coming over and she does cricket and um, with uh, her machine. And so she's gonna bring over a fun project. I don't even know what it is yet. She didn't tell me, but she says, I have a crafting surprise for you and we are going to um, do the, the, uh, the cricketing. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll, I will, uh, post what we um, what we've done when um, when we get finished so check back on the uh, on my page Jane Nicole designs and I will have to post what we did today okay so this is the inside that um, all the ones that that I feel like okay if I could take this off in one foul swoop that's what it would be so um, we're gonna set that aside really quick. There we go, let's put some of this garbage. I don't know about you guys, if you um, are weeding vinyl, there's a few things that you can do. Um, sometimes I have blue tape, masking tape, and I just stick it on there. Some people have little containers that they use and they stuff it in the container and stuff like that. Um, but I just kind of prefer sitting off to the side. Um, once in a while I get a rogue piece of vinyl, so um, I do like to use tape once in a while to make sure that that is, um, you know, not coming to my, my uh, uh, what do you call it, my vinyl. So, okay, all right. While this is finishing over here, oh, looks like it's done. Um, I like to do all of my vinyl cutting at the same time and vinyl weeding at the same time if I'm doing multiple shirts. Sometimes I have an order of eight to ten shirts and I want to make sure that, that I don't miss a piece of vinyl on it. I will do them all at the same time. So um, anytime you do a craft project, a card, whatever I always make two three copies of the same thing because sometimes I might be in a rush and not be able to um, to get to something and if I have something already made it's so much nicer okay so I'm what I'm doing is I'm looking where the vinyl ends the image ends this off. Like that. and I'm gonna use my cutter my 12 inch cutter here I'm gonna cut it off and I always roll my vinyl if I can, and then store it away. I have a big box that I put all of them in, and um, I will tape it so that it doesn't unroll, and then, then we'll be good. Okay, 
So this is what it looks like. I know you can't see it, so let's do a little bit of vinyling here. And this one, um, this vinyl, this is the Swing Design vinyl. It is really um, a, a lot thinner. It goes on to each image. Um, it takes less pressure, um, or not necessarily pressure, but time. And so when I use this vinyl, it's super easy to, um, super easy to weed. It goes pretty quick. The other thing too, I hit finish after I'm done. I always like to leave my image up because sometimes I take out something that I'm not supposed to. And thankfully this is forgiving enough where if I'm looking at the image, See how that comes off Ooh, that's a big one then um, I can put it back on if I need to um, the, the shirt that I'm wearing uh, today the feathers on here I don't know if you can see it I want to go like that little sparkly feathers there was a bunch of things that I couldn't figure out and so I put the the image back up and oof thankfully um, I didn't pick out too many I actually did pick out a few that that um, we're not supposed to be gone, and so I think that's a big help sometimes when, when you have the image that you're using right up in front of you. So, you see how that goes? Here comes Mr. Cow. He looks like he's starting to, to come alive. There we go. Let's see. I usually give these projects to um, my daughters and um, tell them to have fun weeding and they love to just pick things out which is super super fun all right almost done like I said I always look at it pick out either the middle of the, the letters and things like that so I kind of have a orientation of what I'm trying to accomplish and the the image okay so that's pretty much, I'm looking around. I always check a couple times to make sure, but this is pretty much um, weeding out what I want. So um, I am gonna take you now to my uh, heat press because I have one of the best um, hacks that I got from Heat Press Nation um, to be able to get all this out in a timely manner. So. Um, I'm going to bring the vinyl over to the machine and I'm going to take you with me, uh, my camera here, and we're going to go over and we're going to press uh, both of these t-shirts. So bear with me as I swing around and I take you through my craft room. There we go. Let's see how that is. Sorry about the bumpies here. There we go. All right. All right. Give me a thumbs up or a heart that you can see what I'm working with. I just want to make sure that everybody can see. Let's put it up a little bit higher. There we go. Awesome. Okay. As you see, there's the, 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 um, there we go. This is my heat press. This is a 16 um, this way by 24, and it is from Heat Press Nation. You can see the little logo right there. Um, I recommend this highly. This is the Signature Series, and it is the clamshell, which means it opens up, and then it has a rollout um, platform so that I can work on the platform and not worry about burning myself um, like I said, my last video, I burn myself all the time. So um, when I picked this um, Aubrey from um, Aubrey Jean SVG, she was like, I have this. I love it. I went over to her house and bought it right away. <laughs> so um, anyway, if, if you have any questions about that, um, you can message me and just about my experience of Heat Press Nation. They're a great company. They um, 
they uh, shipped really quick and um, yeah, I'm very, very happy with, with what I have. So um, I have done a lot of things with my heat press. Um, I've done um, beautiful vinyl on masks. I've done um, t-shirts galore, uh, gloves, work gloves before. Um, I had a company that wanted their logo on some gloves. And um, so, you know, it, there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, just a little, little um, plug. This right here, this is a, a bag that I made for um, Melissa. She owns Happy Pooch in uh, Linden, Washington. And she has uh, clumbers that, uh, clumber spaniels that she breeds and sells. And she was like, Eileen, I want you to, um, I want you to make a, a logo for my, my clumber um, kennel. And um, this is what it is. So I just put it on uh, a little, it's like a 14 by 10 canvas bag. And um, when her puppies go home, these go with her puppies. And I think they are so cute. So anyway, okay, there's lots of things you can do. So my trick for you guys is I'm gonna heat up the press. It's been on for a little bit. Right now it is on 320 degrees. Um, I like it hot um, because the vinyl, I don't want it, um, I, I wanna make sure that it sticks. Unfortunately, um, if you don't have it hot enough, it's not gonna stick. So um, just, this is my hack. When you are using uh, heat transfer vinyl and you want it to come off uh, while weeding super, super quick, if you heat this up, let me get my poker. If you heat this up a little bit, it will actually come off a whole lot easier. See how that comes off so nicely because it's a little bit warm. And then I roll it around a little bit, make sure. Let's see if I can. And if I were to do this on this vinyl um, cold, it would probably take me two to three times longer to be able to take this vinyl off. Um, like I said, this is a little bit heavier vinyl than um, the cow print that we're gonna be doing. So when you watch, you'll see how, how the uh, difference is of things coming off versus the thicker vinyl and the thinner vinyl. Now there's a few little pieces there I will just pull out. But like I said, it it's, saves you a whole lot more time. I would, I would recommend if you're gonna do any type of um, heat transfer that you do that. And then look, this is it. I'm just gonna pick off in between these letters because we don't want that. Make sure and double check and triple check that you take a good amount of time to look at your design and make sure that um, you don't have any rogue pieces of glitter or um, vinyl from a different project. But I've made shirts that I've absolutely loved and then two, three washings and wearings later, I look and I've, I've messed it up because I had a piece of vinyl that I like, an E that I forgot to take out of the middle or the D that, oops, I forgot it. So um, just make sure double and triple check. There you go, so it's ready to go. Okay. I wanna show you real quick um, some of the tricks that I've learned while doing my t-shirts. This here is a Bella canvas. It's, um, I wear medium. And um, today I'm gonna to put it on the medium because I want to wear it um, underneath like a jean jacket or something like that. So um, this is the t-shirt. This is an oatmeal color. It's really pretty when you put the, the burgundy on it. But for the first time, this I recommend do not um, wash your garments before you heat press them. It's better that you leave it um, just in its raw when you get it from wherever you, um, you purchased your t-shirts and I just smooth it out and then I put it on the heat pressed for a, a, about 10, 
15 seconds and the reason being is that it's going to take the moisture out of your t-shirt and it's going to make sure that um, your adhesive adhesive sticks really well what you're doing is, is you're making sure it warms up so that that adhesive um, melts and goes right down into your t-shirt and that's what sticks on you see that that's what sticks on the on the t-shirt and I do it for the whole the whole t-shirt first and like I said this this heat press this is the 16 by 24 like I said um, I really recommend it because it goes mostly across I think you know, two X's, I have to do a little bit of adjusting, but for the most part, uh, it makes a really, really good um, heat press. You just once and you're done. Okay, so after I've done that, I've taken the moisture out of it. Another hack for me, I am a little bit of a stickler on making sure it is square. And so I line up my t-shirt just like that. And then I shake it, shake it, and then I'm gonna press right down the middle. There's a lot of tools and tricks and things like that, but not every t-shirt is made in the same way. And so I wanna make sure that the middle of the shirt is where I'm pressing the image. And so for a few seconds, I'm gonna make sure that I have the middle of this shirt. There we go. Okay, so right now there's a line right down the middle of it and that's gonna be my gauge. I hold on to the corners here up and I just bend it over the side there. There's many different ways to do it and I know some people do it actually where the t-shirt is upside down but I get so confused I can't do it that way. So that's why I put it in half. So if I were to look down the middle of this, that is where the middle of the shirt is. Okay. The next thing I do with my image is I make sure that my image is around about the same on each side. And if it is, then I just fold it in half so I know where the middle is. And then I go down to the bottom and make sure that the middle is there. I do use one tool every once in a while. This is a um, shirt neckline kind of um, gauge. And I, it's about three inches from the top. And so I just set that right there. Make sure it's lined up with the, the um, middle. And then I just put my image, you know, there's the, my little corner right there and right here. And I'm just going to line it up. Make sure that your image starts right on that three, three inches. That's usually about pleasing to the eye. And I'm gonna make sure that this goes down in a way that it's gonna be straight. So I use the gauges on each side of my ruler, press it down, and girls, we're ready. We are ready to press. Um, if I had a small, um, if I had a small image, I don't know if you um, have it, but on Amazon, you can use heat tape and this is okay to put on your image but these images today I'm using are is pretty large so I don't really feel like I need that um, but that's a really good thing if you have some small small images so this is super hot this is 320 degrees and um, I want to protect the the um, acetate here and so I put on this is a heat Teflon sheet and I make sure that it's over my image and that um, I don't get anything that would, would stick to the top because I hear it is terrible to, um, to pick off. So push your, your signature um, tray in, push it down. And I love this. This is one of my favorite things on the signature because I am super short. I'm 5'2", and my heat press is a little bit higher on the um, a table. And so this here just is a... A game changer it saves from jumping up in the air kind of thing and trying to get um, things down especially if you have um, a medium that is uh, thicker and you need to make sure that that works okay that was the happy beep that means that this is is ready so I'm gonna pull that off and then um, hack number three or four this is a barbecue glove and I make sure that my image is down and so I'm gonna tap on my t-shirt 
where my image is. And my mentor, Aubrey, she was telling me, if you don't have this, it is a game changer. And you know what? I don't know if it's a game changer because I've always used um, the press and the glove uh, together. So it seems to work for me. So I'm gonna do this one more time. I usually do three times because I wanna make sure that this image goes from the, pa the acetate paper or page down to this t-shirt. I want the um, adhesive to, to stick into the uh, fabric of the t-shirt. The and then, um, then I won't have to worry about when it goes through the washer and like a piece falls off. So um, I do it for uh, three times. So it's about a minute and a half the total. Okay, so I'm gonna press this down one more time because I wanna make sure that I don't have any lifting. And then I start from a corner, hold my hand, and look it. Isn't that beautiful? Um, for time's sake, I'm gonna not press it the third time, but if you, um, if you feel like you need to press it one more time, I would put it on there without the, the, you know, the clear sheet on there and then would press it one more time and do the exact same thing. So um, that's the t-shirt and it is ready to go. So 